this is part of my Iowa farm listening tour. I've been going all over the state and uh, talking to folks in Iowa about agriculture. And I've heard all about things like the EPA, the Farm Bill, uh, Washington, D.C. being out of touch with Main Street America. And, and so I'm, I'm here to listen to you. I want to just tell you briefly my bio and then open it up to, to talk. And I, I actually want to, if you don't ask, if you don't, I want you to tell me what's on your mind and what's important to you and what you'd like out of your next United States Senate. That's one of the reasons I'm here, as you might have heard, I'm running for the United States Senate. And I grew up in Ankeny, which is on the other side of Des Moines from here, and uh, had the great fortune of being a, a little bigger and a little faster than most of my friends. So Coach Hayden Fry came and gave me an athletic scholarship to play for him. And I played on the last Rose Bowl team in Iowa in 1991. Uh, I also realized the first day on campus that I was not going to play in the NFL because even though in Ankeny I was one of the bigger and faster ones, University of Iowa I was not one of the bigger and faster ones. So I set out to use my college scholarship to be uh, as, as much, get as much education as I could. So I got my undergrad in three and a half years, and while I was still a member of the football team, I got my MBA and my law degree from the University of Iowa. We then uh, I then set out as a uh, a life of small business entrepreneurship. In 2002 was the first time I was bit by this political bug. Even though in high school I had attended my first caucus and uh, caucus for George Herbert Walker Bush um, after eight years of Reagan and how we wish we had those Reagan days back because that seemed like things worked. At least when I was a boy it seemed like things were working uh, under Ronald Reagan. But uh, so I've been active in politics, but to be a candidate, I ran for state treasurer in 2002. And then uh, in 2004, President Bush, the son, Bush 43, appointed me to be the United States Attorney in the Southern District of Iowa, which you're sitting in, the Southern District of Iowa. And I prosecuted, my office prosecuted about 2,500 cases, uh, things like immigration and drugs and guns. And I like to say it was putting bad guys in prison. Trying to keep the community safe all over from Council Bluffs to Davenport and all points in between for the southern half of Iowa. And, uh, and then uh, when President Obama was elected, I was part of the change in the hope and change, and they appointed a new U.S. attorney, as presidents are allowed to do. And uh, I went out and started my own law firm. And I've, I've, before that, I had started several other small businesses first time around, before I was U.S. Attorney, those continued, so I'm, I, I own a few small businesses kind of all over. I own one in Ankeny, I own one out in Adel, uh, where we sell trailers, uh, cargo trailers and, and utility trailers and the like. And so I'm sort of a serial entrepreneur here. And, and uh, when I heard about Harkin's resignation, uh, I really thought and prayed and talked to my wife and my kids, and, and we decided that this is a way that I can make a difference with all the experience I've had as a small business owner and as a, as a federal prosecutor and the like. So part of that is getting out and talking to real people. I, I, tell you, I was out in Washington, D.C. the last two days. I didn't talk to a lot of real people. There's, not a, there's no Main Street, at least, that I've been on in Washington, D.C. And the issues out there that they concern themselves with are not what I hear when I'm back in Iowa. And so I want to open it up to your questions, to your thoughts. I'd like to focus, if you can, any thoughts on, on agriculture, farm bill, um, food stamps, crop insurance, and those types of things. So, the floor is yours. Oh, and by the way, everywhere I go, and this is just part of being a U.S. Senate candidate, there's at least one person from the Iowa Democrat Party videotaping my remarks. And he's sitting to my left, and I'm told that, now that's Shane, actually, he's from a different uh, media outlet. And there's an individual from the Iowa Republican website. And, and so it doesn't matter where I go. Um, they showed up when there's been nobody there. They showed up when there's been 25, 50, 150. And it's just, it's part of what this new election is. And they're just looking for me to make a mistake. So it's your job to try to <laughs> ask me a question that, uh, yeah, please don't matter. Go ahead, Burl. You can call me Mike if you want. 
okay, like that. <laughs> Keep me saying that. You say he's part of the media? Yeah, Shane to my left, yeah. I write caffeinatedthoughts.com. Yeah. He's, uh, he's flaunching it a bit to uh, start drilling you with questions. This is not I'm, a, not, I'm not a farmer. I'm raised on a farm and I work on a farm. Yeah. But you see in the paper all the time about the bad thing the farmer's doing with the land and the water and everything. What about the good stuff? Well, and I think Bill Moore, the I had a conversation with the Secretary of Agriculture about this issue because it was as uh, the Bill Stowe the, that runs the Iowa, the Des Moines Water Works, was saying it's all the farmers' fault that we have all this nitrates and we're spending all this money, and, and that's I don't. We just need to get the word out about how good Iowa agriculture is. It's 25 percent of the economy. And uh, it's a very important part of, of the Iowa landscape and economy. I, I, I just think farmers need to tell a story and, and, and just continue to use good land practices. Continue to, to use things like precision farming and when they apply chemicals and fertilizers so they're not uh, applying too much and having it run off their field. But it also, if you understand how we got to this spring, we had one of the driest years on record, low yield, lower yield crops, and then we had heavy rain. And that's just a recipe for having oh, yeah. runoff. And there's, they don't seem to understand. That's, yeah, nobody's interested in the truth anymore, are they? It's, it's well, a little. I take the farm here spokesman and there goes two articles in there about, you know, different farmers doing different things and protect the land and the water. But you don't see that in the mainstream. Right. And I know Secretary Morley is doing a really good job um, seeing that, that we don't need federal regulation, that we don't need the state to come in and pass laws that don't make sense for Iowa agriculture. They're trying to do some voluntary programs and, and put some money into some voluntary programs that, that would be good for long-term sustainability. We can go around down the line, Mark. To get <laughs> okay, that's fine. Yeah. The last, uh, in the last 30 days from experience, I can tell you that I'm developing a feeling that there are too many restrictions imposed on farmers by the federal government. We don't hear about that in the press, but in the last few days, we're receiving some CRP ground. It was in the CRP for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Beautiful stand of grass. Excellent ground cover. No erosion. Wildlife cover, perfect. What do you do? You go in and spend about $120 an acre, spray it with Roundup, kill it, go in and reseed some of the same species that were there originally, and that will let the weeds come up, of course. And, and the government cost shares 50 to 60% of the cost of weed going in. Does that make any sense? You know, we've got what we want, or what I think we want, and a good ground cover. There's no erosion, and yet we got to tear it up, destroy it, redo it to some of the very same species that we had before, and, and send the government a bill for, for maybe 60 bucks an acre. It makes no sense. I, I see in the recent years, government, I'm talking about the FSA offices, the NRCS offices, you don't dare do anything without well, getting down on your knees and asking them first. It's because I think of the crop insurance law that they've got in us. If we want that subsidized crop insurance, we better play by their rules. And some of their rules are pretty are pretty controlling, controlled by people that have never farmed in their life. And whatever the little black book says, that must be the right way. Right, and it's bureaucrats who write a regulation today, and then tomorrow they have to write another regulation or they don't have done. But the, the, along those same lines is, I don't know, do you receive these uh, census of agriculture? I usually receive at least four of them <laughs> for the same farm, and, um, and, and it's, it, oh, it's extensive. It, it asks you every detail of everything you could possibly ever imagine, some of it with no relation to Iowa agriculture at all, and uh, some bureaucrat then gets to count it up and and make predictions as to yield and number of eggs produced and all those kind of things. I, I think the over-regulation of all parts of our economy are a great
great cause for concern. And I, 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 that's one specific example. And I know that if it's not ground up or controlled burn, then you got to disc a third of it every so many years. So yeah, it's, it seems to me that one of the foundations of our country is free enterprise. And the good farmers or the good small business owners succeed. And the ones that aren't good don't succeed. And, 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 and by inserting the federal government in, a, in an over-regulation situation like we have across so many different industries is, is really not good for what America was founded on. I mean, look at, look at the Department of Education. 5,000 bureaucrats in Washington, D.C. that think they know what's better to educate my kids in public schools than I do, or than the school board does, or than their teachers do. And I just... It's a great concern, and that's one of the things I want to do when I go to Washington, D.C., is bring a common-sense approach. And even if it's, let's sunset every regulation, and every 10 years, let's look at this and see if this makes sense. So that we just don't have, I mean, I think it was Reagan that said the closest thing to perpetual life or, or eternity is a federal program. And it's very true. So I, I, I completely agree with your sentiment, and it's, and it's not just, you know, that's one specific example, but it's all over the place. 